Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here on the Daddy Dan blog. I love saying that. You know that, guys? I really love saying that. Hey, today I'm checking out Cole Shack, the Night Stalker Files number one and number two. Oh, my God. I love Cole Shack, the Night Stalker. It's based on the... 1970s TV series of the same name, Cole Shacker, The Night Stalker. Hey, that's what I call The Good Stuff. Be sure to check out my friend Dave Sunstorm on The Good Stuff Guy channel. Yeah, and he loves The Night Stalker too, I'm sure, and he's going to love these Cole Shack, The Night Stalker Files comic books. I just got them in. I can't wait to check them out. And I love the covers right off the rip, based on the original Darren McGavin, who played the Night Stalker character from that 70s TV show. And as everybody knows, Night Stalker with Darren McGavin is Daily Dan's favorite TV show. You don't believe me? Check this out. Here's some other Night nice Stalker stuff I hadn't even got to reviewing yet. I was saving that for this Halloween. There's a complete episode guy hanging up over there. I'm a big Night nice Stalker guy. But I didn't get to them comics because I got number one and number two in just recently. So that's what we're going to check out today. So let's get started. I can't wait to get these guys on the wall. Well, I will have to say one thing, though. That is not the coolest cover in the world. Eh? And inside this glossy, shiny, number one, Coast at the Night Stalker from 2010, we see the inside credits and get a look at all the people to blame if we don't like this book. And we start out with Coast at the Night Stalker and Coast writing on his little thing. Look, he got him a laptop. What year is this supposed to be? Back in the 1970s, I thought he must be writing back. Stuff he remembered from back in the day as he has a drink of Jack Daniels. Well, I'm about to have that too right after this video. <laughs> And that's the inside front cover as this bitch screams for who knows what reason. Well, this explains what reason. Yeah, she's a star. They're making a movie. She's a little starlet. Well, she's a hot little starlet. They did the art in this book very, very well. Even though I'd be happier if it looked like one of them old comic books from the 70s. I know it's a 2010, but I'm not real fond of the glossy stuff. Check out the art with the almost see through robe. That's pretty cool, right? And this guy looks like somebody I just can't call who he looks like right now. But he's the director. So, girl, get off that up. She's going outside to take her a break, probably looking for something to smoke on. Then all of a sudden, she lets out a real scream, a real ah, and she's attacked by a seven-foot-tall, winged, gargoyle-looking demon vampire thing. I don't know what the hell it is, but whatever's going on, I'm sure this evil director got in it, because look at him. He's a feminine, like, oh, my God, I'm going to put this in my movie. Enter the Night Stalker. That's right, enter the Night Stalker, and they're at a big restaurant, and people's having dinner, and look, it's the Vincenzo, Anthony Vincenzo, the editor-in-chief, who Carl Kosak works for. They're having dinner in a bar. Kosak don't want to get stuck with the bill. It's the usual rigmarole as they go on and on. Carl, damn it, let me pay, damn it. I got this. That's right. We just spent two bit, two pages arguing over who got to pay the bill, and of course, Vincenzo won. Ah, eh, Carl didn't have no money anyway. I bet you on that. When he goes back and he starts working on his little writing, he's working on his little story. He's remembering the day when he faced off with whatever in the blue hell this thing is. Well, we're going to move pretty fast with this one. Two books to do and all. Carl catches the story. He goes out and checks with that director who says, I don't know what happened to that girl. They investigating this here missing girl. Maybe you should talk to one of her friends. And that's what Carl does. He hooks up with this chick, one of her friends. They're talking about it. The director creep guy is going to watch him out the window as Carl drives down the road questioning the girl in his usual style. You know, one thing I don't like about this comic book is the serious lack of the really cool hat Cole Shack the Night Stalker always had on his head. You know what I'm talking about in almost every scene? You saw that thing in his head in almost every episode. Don't ever cover of the magazine except for one, maybe. So we get lots of questioning, lots of talk, lots of discussion about what could have happened to that girl. As we go looking for her, we go creeping around with Carl and this other chick. Carl, the girl kind of suspects the director might be in the cahoots and something. So they go sneaking around the soundstage, checking things out when the director shows up with a gun. He, he's, he's got a gun. That don't happen in that stalker episodes. Bam! What the hell? He shot the girl and shot her down and shit. And then he puts the gun on Kosak and Kosak's in trouble. And that evil, evil director guy's like, Kosak, hands up. 
And this goofy bastard's explaining the cold shot because they always got to fill out the whole story. He didn't got him a demon from hell. He's then captured this demon. He's in control of this demon. Cold shot's like, what the freak it lived? Anyway, he got this demon. He put this demon in a cage and now he control this demon and he's using this real demon to make his movie and he's killing his actors and stuff. And Cold Shack's like, oh my God, this is really a bad plot. That's right, in these shiny, glossy pages from 2010 of Cold Shack, the Night Stalker Piles. Carl says, this plot, needs work. Yeah, they should have worked on this story a little bit. It says, as the evil henchman drags the girl in to feed him over to the demon. Oh my God. What the heck's going on? He gonna shoot the evil. He gonna, he gonna, he gonna knock over some paint. Bam! Make a big noise. Kosak uses this distraction to make a break for it. He's running down the thing. But Goofy Bastard gonna unleash the beast. As we see Carl dipping. Diving and thinking, oh, I got to get the hell, do I get the hell out of here. Carl's all looking around, looking at his reflection in the window, thinking, how am I going to get out of here? When evil demon come busting through the wall, all growling and shit. And Carl Cossacks, as usual, like, where in the blue hell is my hat? And here comes that evil thing as he looks for the egg. And this is the usual part we saw in every episode of the Night Stalker TV show where Carl go on a run. He be dipping, he be diving, he be hiding. Check him out up against the wall right here. Remember that famous episode where he faced a werewolf on his ship? He was all up against the wall just like that for like five or ten minutes of story time in the TV show. So this book's real realistic as he sees this old... Abandoned van? I did get there. Cosette checks it out, but it ain't going to be working as all of a sudden, the Incredible Hulk demon thing shows up. Hey, demon picked a bad time to show up. Carl, in his usual style, gives the demon a good squish with a giant truck. And bad guy's like, oh, shit, did that just happen? That's right, demon's all pissed off. Look at him, he's all down there growling and shit because Cosette didn't run over him with the mother. Freaking truck. Oh, my God. Cossack rules. Yeah, the truck don't look too good, though. That truck was a piece of crap from the get-go. Crack, poop, pop. The demon trying to get out. Cossack's all worried about it. Ah! Bloop. As the truck squishes the demon. So wrapping it up in usual Carl Cossack fashion. Carl at the office. Carl topping up the story. Carl telling people what's going on. The editor's like, Carl, really? This really happened? And Carl's like, yeah, man, this is horrible, but I'm headed back to Hollywood. And it ends with Carl Cossack headed out to Hollywood. Well, I thought that was a really good story, actually. It was kind of okay. Uh, I don't like the pages on this, this comic, but it's got that glossy shine to it. You know? But in this Moonstone comic from 2020, we get from 2020, we get Oh my God, we get, oh my God, Savage Beauty. Now this looks like something really cool. I'm going to have to check out Savage Beauty from Moonstone Comics if I ever see that one. Yeah, and then we get, uh-oh, the Saints coming back. And you get some Captain Action. I bet my friend the Captain would really like a, a copy of Captain Action. It's got the green hornet in it. Oh my God, that looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to dig these Moonstone comic books. And then we get an ad for Honey West. Oh, my God. Now, I'm digging that, too. I'm a, I am definitely going to be checking out Moonstone.com for some really cool Moonstone comic books. And you should, too. Check out Spider. Oh, my God. That looks good. Want to see some kind of vampire? I never heard of Spider. They got so much cool stuff in here I've never heard of. And on the back cover, we got something for called Rotten, and it looks like it's about zombies and stuff. Oh, my God, but that comic book was kind of short. That's kind of cool because I got two of them to do, right? Look, they all come with warnings and shit. No, I don't want it. Don't read this. It's crap. So that's a deep dive into Cold Shack, the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker Files, number one. Guess what? It's time to dip into Cold Shack, the Night Stalker Files. With that really cool cover. See that hat? He got that hat in his hand in this one, but the hat's still there. And, and then we're going to dip into this number two issue right now. Hey, here's a kicker for you. They was a whole year between issues between Cold Shack number one and Cold Shack, the Night Stalker Files number two. This is number two I'm looking at. I just checked it out. It's from 2011. The other one was from 2010. So they, they, one of these come out like once a year. Oh, my God, what a rare comic. And in that year, the 
the artist learned a lesson. This starts out the same way, same inside cover as the last one, but check this out. No glossy pages. It's all real comic book art. It's these goofy bastard criminals escape from custody. Hey, that looks like that goofy bastard from last time. I wonder if that's the same guy who got caught hoarding up the demon done went to prison and now he's on an escape mission. Oh my God. And info panels brought to you by the Daily Damn Blog. We look at issue number two where all these goofy bastards are escaping from prison. They run in through the swamp. They being chased and then they run into something. And we flash forward to the police. The police are running through the swamp. The police are everywhere. I love the art in this book. This book is off the chain. And I like the fact that suddenly this book does... It went from them glossy, full-panel, glowy pages back to a real comic book-looking art. I just love this. And no, I'm not just loving it because it's based on my favorite TV show, Cold Shack the Night Stalker. I'm saying that because it's true. The art in this book is off the chain as the cops search for the escaped convicts. And they don't know what happened as they find a pile of bloody gore. And they say, whoa, what happened? As Colshack races to the scene, he's on the story. He's heading towards Miami to find out about these escaped convicts. That's right, Colshack arrives at the Imperial Media Group for a meeting to find out what's going on, to find out everything going on. They're going to catch him up on what's happening with a bunch of escaped convicts as he walks through the media pool. He says, I'm not going to be working here. You know, I got a boss named Vincenzo. Oh, well, maybe we'll make you an offer. Let's catch up on what's going on, Carl. So in a long drug out episode with no hat on again, may I add, I'm missing the Cole Shack hat in these comics. Uh, but look at this. It's like they just superimposed his face from the TV show right over the comic. That art is so good. Is that drawn or is that a damn picture? I can't get over that because the rest of it don't look like that. That is weird. So in this little drawn out panelly thing, they're just talking about what happened here. Some escape convicts going on. Would you like a job, Carl? And Carl's like, no, I done told you. I got to be. So Koshak guy darn hangs out here. He decides he's going to do a little, few little freelance work for this guy. They give him the damn feature slot. This little bitch right here, she get all pissed off. They have this big, long argument, and she goes, I can't believe you're giving him the feature spot. Oh, well, that's her. She's all upset about it. Okay, that's the story. And apparently it goes on and on and on for more pages. Carl and this girl are into it. How about him getting the feature beat? And now I guess I know why Carl wanted the feature beat. It's Carl Cruz's Miami Beach. Yeah, that's right. Carl's doing a little freelance work on his vacation. He's writing stories for that goofy bastard and checking on this prison convict escape thing. You know, I really thought more of the Night Stalker than doing a prison escape issue, but here we go. Anyway, Carl's on the case. He's checking with the friends of the people who escaped. He's trying to get a lead. He's trying to figure out what's going on. He's getting people drunk up to catch a clue, because Carl Kolshak is the man, no matter what the story is. Meanwhile, Goofy and Doofy decide they're going to go down through there, and they're going to see if they can track down a lead on these escape convicts. And as they drive through the swamps of Florida and Miami, check out what they see this this whatever the heck that is. It's like a convict in chains, maybe. Or a wild man running through the woods. I do not know. But anyway, they see that. There's a big swerve. There's a big crash. The car goes off the hill. Doors are ripped off, and people's like, ah! ah! This comic book is a little bit different than what I was expecting with Koshak here in the big city of Miami, not Chicago. As he has his coffee brought to him by this Wow, this thing. I'm surprised that bitch ain't got things. Anyway, Carl writing up all the stuff he done learned about the background for the escape convicts. Yeah, that's true. He's doing background work. He gets it all wrote up. The secretary's like, okay, and she's flirting with old Carl. And then she goes sagging away like a Michael Harper female wannabe. Oh, my God, look at that bitch sagging. You know, Harper, when a girl sags, it's okay. When a guy does it, it's beep. And Kosak's excited and makes a hook shot. So eventually, Goof and Do show up back at the office, and Goose telling Kosak about their little car wreck and stuff, and that they saw this something or another down there in the swamp, and they had no clue what it was. Kosak is intrigued. Eh, ain't that some stuff? Kosak's thinking about going in and checking that out as we flash back to the swamp where rednecks are finding bodies in the swamp once more. These convicts who escaped are not doing well. 
Well, to say in issue two, there seems to be a lot of pondering going on. As we've come to the end of issue two already, after a few miserable pages of Kosei just kind of pondering and checking things out, and as he runs into the Duth, and he has a word with the Duth, the Duth tells him the story about something large and something big that darted in front of the car that caused a wreck, and he tells him, I got a picture. And he shows him the picture of the footprint they found. The Bigfoot fucking footprint they found. Could I not be happier? That in the last page of my Colshack, the Night Stalker number two, I find my friend Carl Colshack, the Night Stalker, pondering a giant footprint. In Florida, where the skunk ape lives, God darn it, best comic book ever, don't you think? And I love the way they changed up the art from the high glossy stuff. That is a trip. It's a little short, so the comic book reviews go pretty quick. Check out Captain Action. Oh, that's something new, and that is to be continued, and I can't wait to get issue number three. And I'll be looking for issue number three right as soon as I'm off this video, probably. Ah, let me get some Captain Action. And then we get a commercial for the two books. For the price of one, you get the cheerleader flips out and some damn zombies, and you can get two for one if you order that. Plus, maybe rotten. And then you get more Zorro stuff coming up. I guess they got the rights to Zorro now. And there's a new Avenger in town, and it's this guy? Oh, okay. And get the guy from the old hardback novels, and then you get another comic commercial for Honey West. Honey West! I don't all remember Honey West. Now, to be honest, I actually saw a Honey West comic book cover once. I think I did a video about it on the Fat Comic Book Guy. Be sure to check that out. My other channel, the Fat Comic Book Guy. Anyway, this is a tortured back issue, I guess. I don't know. Charles Depp, something weird from Moonstone's doing. I like the artwork. It looks kind of cool. I may have to check out whatever the blue hell it is. And he gets some more Green Hornet. And it's the Green Hornet case files, and that looks awesome. I'm glad somebody's redoing the Green Hornet stuff. And the same Savage Beauty commercial from the other comic book and there goes something for the saint the spider oh is that the spider i give credit where credit's due these damn spider covers are very 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 cool i think i'm gonna like checking out the spider and on the back last panels you get more ads for the spider and some more cool spider comic book cover art i enjoy cover art that's my thing spider satan's murder machines oh my god satan's murder machines what a cool title and check out this green lantern i always liked green lantern he was a pretty cool superhero to uh, that last movie oh my god best back cover ever cold shack the Night Stalker Compendium. Oh my God! A reprinting of both Case Files and Chronicles in one limited edition hardcover comic book series that Daily Dan will be buying. So that's my look at Cold Shack, The Night Stalker Files from 2010 and 2011. Number one and number two consecutively. Based on a TV show starring Darren McGavin from the early 70s, 1972, to be precise. One of my favorite shows from all time, and an honor to have these books. I am truly in love with them. I can't wait to get them all bagged and tagged and hung up on the wall to display as comic book cover art. And that is some cool art. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And until next time, this is Danny Staten saying thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out me on my other channel, The Fat Comic Book Guy. And until next time, blog over, dudes.